r slash us credit. People that work on movie sets, what are the most entitled actors you have ever met? I realize this isn't movie sets, but I worked the front desk at the most upscale hotel in the city, so I came in contact with a lot of famous people, mostly musicians. We have a giant yearly concert in the hotel's gardens every year. But here's a list of the coolest and worst I've encountered, by far more cool than awful. Journey, by far the biggest of us, specifically the guitarist. They came into the hotel at 3am, and he got the biggest suite in the hotel, the one the prime minister and the queen have stayed in. And he stormed down, and said it wasn't big enough, and he wants a bigger room. After explaining to him that this was the biggest room he threw a fit, and demanded we build him a bigger room or knock down some walls. Cool guy. Slayer. Pretty grumpy, when I told them how much I loved their music growing up Carrie King just scoffed at me. Demi Lovato walked into the hotel and said oh fuck that I'm not staying here and slept in her tour bus. Martin Sheen, really reserved, tried to avoid any contact with others. Motley Crue, weirdly very nice and well behaved. Machine Gun Kelly, prick, partied all night and caused a bunch of damage. Tech N9 Northeast, really nice, stopped to talk to all the staff. Paul Martin, former prime minister of Canada. He was cool I guess. He shook my hand and that's about it. Justin Trudeau, current prime minister, really nice nothing much else to say. Queen. Brian May was cool as shit. He talked to me for a while and told me some old queen stories. Adam Lambert was a bitch. Robert England. Super duper cool. I told him Freddy Krueger was the only thing that ever gave me a nightmare as a kid, and he said well looks like I finally caught yeah, in his Freddy voice, got a pic with him choking me. Massey Gray, amazingly friendly, talked to me for a good half hour just shooting the shit, called me a cool cat, and gave me $100 tip. Dallas Green, another great guy, he was super busy, but I told him how much Alexis on fire meant to me. So he talked with me for a bit and signed some stuff. Ron McLean, hockey night in Canada, another great guy, just made fun of Don Cherry. Magic Johnson, absolute sweetheart. I still can't believe I met him. There's lots more but that's all I can think of right now. I worked in fine dining and met quite a few celebs. Shaq was amazingly sweet and it was awesome to watch him walk through a doorway. He had to almost double over to get through the pretty tall double doors attached to the hotel. Magic Johnson was also pretty awesome to the staff when he came in one night. Those dudes can eat and drop some serious dough. John Voight was a weird one. He introduced himself to me by his full name and complimented me up and down but not in a creepy way. Just overly friendly and really enjoying the quiet restaurant at breakfast time. He made me genuinely smile, but I have heard he's a bit cuckoo. My idiot AGM didn't recognize Ludacris and sat him in the very front window of the restaurant with his date. I immediately ran over and asked them if they would like to move to a more private booth in the back, which he looked relieved about immediately. He was nice, but reserved and ready to keep his night going. Far as I could tell. CeeLo came through the restaurant and had a dog wrapped in his arms. He just hung out and spoke with some guests of his I think who were staying in the hotel. It looked like business, but he seemed nice enough. My favorite was meeting the entire cast of Alias right after its heyday, including Ben Affleck in tow, and Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Garner were the sweetest of them all. Bradley has ice blue eyes and called me adorable for answering some of his questions about the historical downtown area we were in and Jennifer ordered over 4 coups of our chowder, she was pregnant and Victor Garber and the rest just seemed so down to earth. Drew Barrymore cried over her breakfast about the reviews about her directorial debut Whippet, which I thought was a great movie, while Justin Long comforted her, telling her they should just go off to a private island for a bit. It was kind of sweet, kind of escapist from reality. She is very tiny I roll. I have more info slash stories if anyone wants. My BF also works in one of the biggest ATL recording studios and I worked in film for a while, but not big time. I have a friend who works on a lot of movies, so she has worked with a ton of people. From what I remember, here are her thoughts on different people. 
Jake Gyllenhaal's method acting style and requirements are annoying and strict, so he can often be rude and hard to work with. Lawrence Fishburne initially comes off as a dick and absolutely hates when you call him Larry, but he can swiftly turn that around and be a great guy and your best friend. Keanu Reeves is everything amazing you'd expect him to be, but because he is so personable he doesn't have too many intimate one-on-ones with people. Emma Watson is a bit self-involved. Matt Damon is super cool, funny, and intelligent. James McAvoy is stellar to work with apparently, she also has a huge crush on him. M. Night Shyamalan is apparently an amazing father and one of the best bosses to work for. I've heard several stories about the work he puts in to being a great family man. 50 Cent is goddamned hilarious. He was hanging out on set with my friend and a white girl in a kimono walked by and he yelled out oh shit. They got the Asian jump off in here. Russell Crowe is apparently super down to earth, but he can get a bit isolated if you catch him while he's focusing. Christian Bale acts kind of like Kino, but he also can be so focused on his work that he kind of forgets to interact with people. Ryan Gosling is apparently hilarious and lovely. Brian Cranston is also what you'd expect. He's a super nice guy who acts kind of like a father figure to most people. So to answer your question. Jake Gyllenhaal and Emma Watson are the worst I've heard about so far. I haven't worked on movie sets, but I have worked in music. JLo and Justin Timberlake were by far the most entitled. They threw fits like children and were just overall very unpleasant. Taylor Swift was nice, but her entourage was, at times, unbearable. They had a holier-than-thou attitude, and her manager acted like a damn dictator. Taylor stopped to take a picture with some employees from one of the restaurants providing food for the artists. Immediately after, her manager yelled to one of her staff members to go over there and make sure they don't use that photo on anything related to the restaurant, social profiles, website, etc. I get it, you have to protect a likeness as a brand, but you don't have to be a giant bitch about it. There is no need to berate and threaten some part-time 19-year-old girl serving food. Chris Brown's entourage was incredibly annoying when it came to the gifting suite. They all wanted to be let in, even though it's just for the artists. Some random ass entry-level label rep expected to be walked to the front of the line, she wasn't even allowed in. His manager even threatened to not have Chris walk through if there was going to be a problem. That didn't work. But in general, the less famous they are, the more entitled they act. The worst offenders are always someone with one hit that you know was only popular because they rode the coattails of whatever trend is hot. They buy into their own hype. I used to work in a certain job for the movie industry. My whole family still does. There are a few groups of people on set who get to see the talent as they really are away from the spotlight who get so good at not interacting with them that the stars forget someone is there and this one is one of them. Now, in the bees, you get treated a lot of different ways and most times you just shrug it off and act like a professional because you are being paid stupid good money to drive and everyone has bad days. Plus, this demographic of people use drugs and alcohol more frequently than most. So you never really know what's going on with them and you never want to burn a bridge for work because the industry can go up or down. Work is not always steady. With that said, the following experiences are about people who are consistently, over weeks, months, or years, insufferable dickheads to multiple people. There is a documented set of data points to show a trend of indiscriminate ashillery over time. 1. Chris fucking O'Donnell. Hands down the worst. This asshole is literally the worst I have seen in the industry. This extremely minor television actor and former model, see, his fattest neck, thinks he is not only talented but divine and will wander aloud while essers are doing something near him. Chris once complained to production that a slightly overweight security guard was assigned to an area near catering. Fuck Chris O'Donnell. Chris, if you're reading this, you are a fucking pale smoker and your neck is fat. Everyone laughs at you when you are not around, especially production. 2. Helen Hunt. More like Helen Cunt. 3. If Helen and Chris got together and got to knock in hooves, the ground would open up and hell would regurgitate Katherine Eagle. 
4. I watched Marissa Tomo yell at a PA who had just slipped and broken his leg in front of her to get out of her way. 5. Jamie Foxx was such a racist and mean motherfucker on Ray that our driver took the meanest waxiest smelliest dump in history in his trailer. Extremely unprofessional but it immediately raised crew member morale as everyone knew this fucking baby came back to the trailer one day to find his toilet destroyed with remnants in and outside of it. 6. Steven Seagal. Imagine forming your entire identity and life's work around being an action hero martial artist, only to end up being a hairy lard ass. It must be like starting out looking like Pierce Brosnan and Pokemon evolving into Jess Ventura. There are also some really cool people out there. My favorites. 1. Lines cool J2. Machinigan Kelly. Even if he's just a big podhead. 3. Lindsay Lohan. I haven't seen her in a while. I worked with her back when people didn't really know she had a drinking problem. She pulled the old grey goose in a water bottle move. I thought she was a great person. Just had problems. I hope she found help. 4. Howard Stern and the Stern Show in general. Howard talks about how high maintenance he is, but his staff is very good about preparing you, and he never gave me shit, as long as my ducks were in a row. I don't particularly care for his wife Beth, seems like she's only nice to you if you're someone. 5. Mark Harmon is the fucking man. Here are some people who I found to be not good or bad, just strange. 1. Jared Butler is about 18 years old in his head. 2. Christopher Walken is literally just as insane as you might think. 3. Joaquin Phoenix is like that guy who wants to be your friend, but is impaired by several layers of mental illness. 4. Samuel L. Jackson is very into porn. No, you don't get it. Very big fan of porn. 5. Tom Cruise is a fucking wacko. No surprise here. If Tom decided to talk to you, he would get inappropriately interested in minutiae about you. I mentioned I like three creamers in my coffee, and he thought it was just about the most interesting fucking thing he had ever heard in his life. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf isn't a real person. Back in 2001, actor Louis Stevens was just an up and coming child star on the Disney Channel. It was manufactured stardom, of the sort, that we've seen from entities like Britney Spears or Justin Timberlake, but it had the potential to go a long way. Stevens, however, had other ideas, so he invented the persona of Shia LaBeouf. He chose the name because it means praise God for the beef in the original Gaulish, and his stated intention with the character was to have it be a caricature of fame, with meat or the beef being a representation of both wealth and influence. Other actors have done similar things, of course. Everyone is familiar with Sacha Baron Cohen's Ali G or Borat, for instance, and surprisingly few people realize that Larry the Cable Guy is a character played by Daniel Whitney, who developed the fake southern accent he uses by meshing the Georgian and Texan accents of his college roommates. The thing is, there's still plenty of available evidence for those folks' real identities. When Stevens created Shia Lebiaf, however, he went as far as to hire reputation editors and public image consultants to erase any hints of who he really is. In fact, if you were to research Louis Stevens nowadays, you'd actually find references to him being a character played by Shia LaBeouf. It's an incredibly subtle piece of meta commentary, I'm sure you'll agree. Anyway, in recent years, the internet has helped keep Shia LaBeouf alive in ways that Stevens couldn't have predicted. While it's true that he has been credited as the character in everything he has done since adopting the pseudonym, the vast amount of media dedicated to the fabricated entity has done far, far more. For example, many people like to reference the song about Shia Lebiaf, sung by Rob Cantor, in which a standard day in the fictional actor's life is detailed, or the infamous Just Do It clip that went viral some time ago. Stevens has recently stated that he might retire the character soon, but for now, well, the people who realize that Shia LaBeouf is a lie created by an actor and expanded by the internet are in the significant minority. Here is a plot twist one. I'm huge Chef Ramsay fan. He is a hero of mine, for many reasons. 
so when I heard that the show Hotel Hell was going to film at the local hotel slash restaurant slash Divaba, I went out of my way to be able to attend. How it went down was the night before the official shoot started, they were just supposed to be filming what the bar is like on a regular day. I was one of the people drinking in the bar on this regular day. The producers had me sign a waiver that I wouldn't talk about the show and let me in. They said that Chef Ramsey wouldn't be coming into the bar or restaurant at all, and that the real filming of the show started in the morning. The cameras were just out to get a feel for what the hotel bar was like before Ramsey gets there, so I did what I usually do at the Murphy's Hotel, and I got blasted that night. I blame the producers, they kept buying me shots. After like 6 or 7 shots I went outside to smoke, and unknowingly was right in front of Ramsey's hotel room. Being super fucking loud, laugh slash howling, singing, scream talking, I was freshly 21 and didn't know better, don't hate on me too bad. I ended up finishing my smoke, went inside and he actually followed me into the bar without me noticing and started abso fucking loudly screaming at the owners of the hotel slash bar who were just seconds before were stripping, buying rounds for the whole bar and one of them ripped his shirt off because the bouncer dared him to most of this part didn't make it to the show. I think the shirt ripping made it, and they spoke about the lap dances, but the bar being so loud was the main thing they needed to fix on the show. A few days later, I'm having dinner and drinks at a nice upscale beast row down the street, and Ramsey comes in, and let me tell you, he is such a doll. I have been a Ramsey fan for years and years, and had seen everything he has ever done. I tried apologizing for being such a drunk idiot, I was so embarrassed. I drooled over him and told him what a big fan I was, and he hugged me and said that it was refreshing to meet such a sweet, loyal fan. Edit, shitty type here. I work conventions and do interviews for some fame sites. So, here are some interactions I have had. Tara Strong. She can be really cool, but I have seen her on off days, so I try to remember to take it with a grain of salt. She can be a bit stuck up, but she does love interacting with fans. John DiMaggio, a really awesome guy. Super funny and personable. And he's more than happy to give you Bender's voice. Morris LaMarche, really nice guy who is more than happy to pose for a picture or give one of his many voices if time allows. Estelle, super awesome. I'm a little buzz, since she remembers me from various conventions and other stuff and often chats with me, but she loves her fans dearly. Kevin Conroy, he really is Batman, and always will be in my heart. He likes to make dramatic appearances with his voice, and it's what the people want. Really chill guy too. Demetri Martin, super nice guy. I actually went to the premiere of his film Dean, in which he paid for everything out of pocket, screening. Tickets that he gave away, refreshments, etc, and personally thanked everyone for showing up. I also stopped him after he did stand up to sign something, and he was more than happy to do so and chat for a bit. Jonathan Joss, really nice guy, he actually fed me and my friends when we were meeting him. He then chatted for a while about his time on Parks and Rec, King of the Hill, and other work he's done. One of the nicest celebs I've had the chance to meet. I guess I've just been really lucky with all the folks I've met. I got other stories too, but these are the main ones I can think of. I was a cameraman for one of my jobs, and also worked at cons in my home state in between for a couple of encounters. Seen Skemmel, Goku, is a dick, and takes playing Goku Aita seriously. He is possessive about the role, and insults others who voiced him. He once asked Goku's JP voice if she feels ownership of all she's done. She said no, and she appreciates the character and the effects of it, but that's not because of her directly. He was in shock to this and kept egging her on to try and make himself feel better about how he feels doing the role. Ask him about his other roles and he's better. He would love to talk more about Lucario and Crowler. Don't ask him to sign stuff for a friend because he just thinks it's for you. He put quotation marks around my friend's name who wanted him to sign his DBZ movie case. Told Constaff he was tired of signing material and wanted to end his session early. Chris Sabat, Vegeta, on the other hand is a genuine funny nice guy. 
while he has gotten tired of doing lines. He'll always play it off like a joke at first and do it for you. You may think he's heard it all from fans, but he's done multiple signatures at a one sig limit line just because people tell him how much his work as Vegeta, All Might, Armstrong and more they love and appreciate all he's done. Claim Crawford is a dedicated, rough and tough fellow for his crew. He made sure to know names and made everyone feel safe and comfortable when he directed his episode. Good man. And glad to see him bounce back after the trailer load of shit Damon Wayans pulled. Vic Mignona, Broly, Ed Elric, is weird. I never saw anything to support the headlines, but he always wore tight clothing and or plunging v-necks. It was off-putting. He wasn't a dick in general, and if he wanted something he'd address the staff accordingly calmly, if he could do something. His autograph lines got egregious. We had Christina V and Erica Mendez at the same table as him, he stole their autograph time being at the same table, since the majority of his fans took up almost the whole line. Christina V rolled her eyes and Erica Mendez was exasperated by him, all he said was sorry ladies, got mine and you got yours. That was pretty dickish of him. I met Christina V the next day who had her own separate table with Mendez, and they were better. I spent half an hour speaking to Troy Baker about guitar, Mark Hamill, and convincing me I didn't need college per se to get into acting, but dedication, practice, and a head facing what's in front, no matter what to get somewhere. All because I brought in the chairs for his panel. He helped out bringing them out. Kin and Shipka comes off like she likes her own circle of friends, but loves to include production crew in her pranks and have them join in conversations. Richard Coyle, Blackwood, watched too much Harry Potter and kept calling his crew muggles and swine. Nick Nolte will start a conversation and awkwardly end it, looking at you, judging every time. I didn't know if he was drunk all the time or if he was just like that. <laughs> William Shatner thinks he can be a dick and people will laugh at him for it. No, it got him nearly punched in the throat by security after he kept nagging on the guard being so tall it made him uncomfortable and many slurs against him later the security guard cracked and put him in a headlock. The one that cracked him, saying you're at the door and I'm at the chair because I can be in both positions, you're only fit for the front to make me look good or the back where you're kicked out when you fuck up. Craig Ferguson once told me he gave me permission to punch James Corden in the throat. Fuck James Corden. Ferguson on the other hand oozed charisma and laughter like it was breathing to him. He joked about not knowing anyone but would shake hands, call us by name and thank us after the show. Gal Gadot. I nearly missed meeting her when I was working on promo stands for Wonder Woman. Good god this woman is an angel. Handled a bit of the con she went to with Jenna Coleman and others, this was before Wonder Woman even came out, and she was inspiring the crew backstage, the rest looked like they didn't want to be there at all. Spoke to her about her fast and furious tenure, let's just say she knew about them wanting to a spin-off with The Rock for a while. Jenna Coleman kind of came off as having anxiety. Not that she was offended, just that she was short with her answers for the most part. She was dismissive with staff until she needed her tights talented. She would talk but not really be engaging. She literally went to a con and asked us to dell into tights after being on stage for a bit and barely speak while Gal kept trying to keep the energy up. Jennifer Lawrence felt fake. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.